Hi everyone, welcome to the webinar. Today we're going to be going over the Maptitude basics. Uh, this whole webinar will be recorded. If you have any questions at any point during the webinar, feel free to type your questions into the questions box on the GoToWebinar toolbar uh, and then hit send. We'll dedicate the first 15 minutes or so to the instructional portion and the last 15 minutes to a question and answer. But if you do have questions, feel free to type them in at any time and I will answer them at the end. Uh, the whole webinar will be recorded and you'll receive a link to the recording tomorrow at around 12.30 p.m. Eastern time. And I believe that is it, so we can go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I'm going to ask, or I'm going to put up a poll, and I'll be putting up several of these polls at various points during the webinar. The first one is going to ask if you have ever used Maptitude before. Okay, so it looks like a few of you have used Maptitude, many of you have not. Uh, so to get started here, I'm going to be mapping a spreadsheet of data, and I'll show everyone that spreadsheet before I actually map it. But to get started, I'll be choosing new map of my data table or spreadsheet, which is the first option here. So I will double click on this, and I will browse for my sample spreadsheet. So mine is in my training folder, and it's this local establishments.xlsx. I'm going to open it up before I actually import it, just so everyone can have a good look at what's on it. So, I have a number of different fields in this. I have the name of each location, the address, the city, the state, and the zip code. Maptitude can use pretty much any geographic information that you have to plot the points. So, if you have a longitude and latitude, you can use that. Uh, if you have address, city, state, zip code, you can use that. If you just have address and zip code, you can use that. There's a lot of different options. Um, I also have some additional fields, which I'll be using to label the points. Uh, and these are things like the phone number, the URL, and the hours. Uh, just on a very broad level, this is a list of breweries in Texas. So that is what will show up on the map. So I'm going to double click on this sheet to choose it. And I only have one sheet in this workbook, and that's sheet one. So the first step here is to match up any geographic fields from my spreadsheet. So you remember I have those address, city, state, and zip code fields with their matching geography. So I want to make sure that address matches up with address. I want to make sure that city matches up with city and et cetera. Uh, if you have latitude and longitude, those will be at the bottom of the list. So next we have a few different options for locating our points. And this will decide how our data shows up on the map. So I am going to display a poll so that everyone can see it, and it's going to ask, how would you like to display your data on the map? So as points, we'll display an individual point for each address, uh, and attached to boundaries, we'll actually join up and aggregate your data to a certain geographic level. So maybe if you wanted to show your data broken up by zip code, then you could choose attached to zip code boundaries. So we're going to start off here by locating them as points, and then we'll go back later and do attached to boundaries. Uh, so any of these locate records options, so they see they start with locate records, will give us an individual push pin for each row of our spreadsheet. Uh, if I want to locate by address, zip code, or city, which I do, I could choose this first option and hit next. You can either import the data or if you or you can link it. So if you have a uh, spreadsheet with a unique ID field. Uh, numeric ID field as well, then you can choose to link the data. And 
uh, pick your ID field here. And then if you make changes to the spreadsheet later and you choose update linked records from the map menu, the map will refresh with any changes that you've made to the spreadsheet. I don't have a unique ID field, so I'm gonna leave this empty and I'm gonna hit import. I don't have a theme that I want for this particular map yet. Uh, I'll go back and change this later, uh, but I will display labels for this map and I'll display labels with the name of each location. So this means that each point from my spreadsheet or each row from my spreadsheet will have a point and it'll be labeled with that name field that I have. I also am not gonna be doing any types of analysis for this map, so I can leave this on none and hit finish. So right now it's gonna run through my spreadsheet and it's going to locate all those points. Okay, so it looks like all of my records were located and none were not. And it's going to zoom me in to the location where all my points are, and it's going to have that label for each location like I've mentioned. So as far as navigating the map goes, uh, you can zoom into the map using the zoom in button. So click on zoom in, and then click where you'd like to zoom into. You can also click and drag to create a box and release that, your mouse, to uh, zoom into that location. Likewise, you can use the zoom out tool. So click on zoom out and then click where you want to zoom away from and you'll zoom out. And you can use the pan tool to click and drag around the map. You can also use uh, your mouse to do all of this. So if you scroll up on your scroll wheel, you'll zoom in. If you scroll down on your scroll wheel, you'll zoom out. And if you click in your scroll wheel, so middle mouse button and drag around the map, you'll be able to move around the map with any tool selected. The map is consisting of or the map consists of a bunch of layers. So we can see all these layers listed in the display manager on the left. If you wanna hide a particular layer, you can click on the green check mark next to it. So right now I'm clicking on the green check mark next to state and it's hiding the state boundaries. And likewise, if you wanna show a particular layer, you can click on the red X. So if I wanted to show MSA boundaries, I could click on the red X next to MSA and it'll turn all the MSA boundaries on. You can adjust the style for any layer by clicking on the respective style next to that layer. So if I wanna change how the state boundaries look, I can click on this little gray rectangle next to state, and I can change the border style and border color and width to anything I want. I can do the same with my sheet one layer. So this is the layer of points that I imported. I can click on this blue dot, and I can set this to whatever I want. So let's say I wanna set it to, uh, Yep, there's a drink icon, so let's do that because these are breweries. And we'll make it a bit larger so we can see them. And I'll change the color to, let's just do like a dark green, for example. Perfect. So there's all my locations. I'm going to display another poll now, which is going to ask if you'd like to see multiple fields of data in the label. So right now we're only showing the name of each location, but we can add additional fields such as that phone number or URL field that we had in the sheet. So if you want to adjust uh, the fields of data, or sorry, 
yeah, the fields of data that appear in the label. You can find the layer that you want to adjust labels for. So in my case, it's that sheet one layer that I made. I can click on the tag icon next to it. This is the button to adjust the labels. And from the field dropdown, I can choose multiple fields to choose multiple fields. If I want to just label it with a different field, I can just pick the field that I want here. Uh, but I want to do multiple fields, so I'll be choosing multiple fields. Uh, I'll label them with the address, so I'll highlight address and hit add. We'll also do the phone number and we'll add the URLs, or let's do the hours. That might be a bit shorter. And we can adjust the uh, the colors here as well for each one. So let's have the name match up with those points that I did, so that same green. Uh, we'll do a bit darker blue for the uh, hours. And then we'll label the uh, phone number with a dark purple. There's also a bunch of other additional settings you can adjust with the labels here, such as the background for them, any callouts you want, and you can play around with those as you like. So there we go. Now each point has multiple fields of data in the label. If you want to move around and adjust labels uh, freehand, you can use the label tools here. So custom labels, rotate custom labels, and custom labels with callout. If you choose custom labels, you can click and drag a label to a new location. So it's useful for moving labels around when you don't, or when you uh, need them in an exact location or like away from other labels. You can also use custom labels with a callout to click and drag the label and draw a callout to that location. So you can move the label wherever you want and it'll draw a line to it. Likewise, you can use rotate custom labels to just rotate the labels. Okay, so next up, I'm going to uh, re-import my spreadsheet and I'm going to use that attach to boundaries option. So if you want to uh, import another spreadsheet or you wanna import the same spreadsheet again to a map, you can choose map and then add table or spreadsheet to a map. And this is gonna take us through the same wizard that we went through the first time. So I'm gonna be choosing the same spreadsheet, but you could choose any spreadsheet here. I'll be choosing sheet one. And again, we have to match up our geographic fields, so this step is exactly the same. This time I'm gonna be choosing show zip code boundaries with your data attached. So this is gonna join up my data to the zip code layer. It's gonna sum up all of the breweries that are in each zip code, and it's going to display at a zip code level. I'll be importing again. And this time I'm thinking, I'm probably going to do a color theme. So I'm gonna display a poll and it's going to ask, how would you like to visualize the differences in your data? Uh, so typically people like seeing the color theme, so I'll most likely be choosing that, but I'm happy to choose whatever people would like here. Sorry, I was muted for that. Uh, I'll be choosing color theme for this. So I'll also choose number of records in sheet one. And what this will do is it will color zip codes a darker color if there are more breweries located in that zip code. And finally, I'll change display labels to number of records as well. So it's also gonna label each zip code with the number of records that are in that zip code. I'll hit finish. There we go. So we can see from the legend down here that depending on the number of breweries that are in that zip code, whether that's from zero to seven, uh, 
the color goes from this sort of pale yellow to a darker purple. And if we zoom in to, I believe there is a purple one in Dallas. Yeah, we can see the colors in more detail. So we can see these labels that I included for the zip codes were probably, uh, were, uh, they're a little hard to see. So I might want to adjust some label settings for that. So under the five digit zip code layer, I can find this my data option. And I will click on the tag next to that. And I'm just going to increase the size of these labels a bit by changing the size. And I'll change the color to black just so we can see it a bit better against the, uh, the green and yellow color theme. Cool, there we go. So now these labels are much easier to see and we can really clearly see how many breweries fall into each zip code. If you wanna change the style of the color theme, you can right click on whatever layer that you have the color theme on, in this case, five digit zip code, and choose make working layer. Click on the color theme button and then go to the styles tab and just cycle through the different styles. There we go. 